Hi folks, uh, we're here in studio today with Brian Johnson of the Northern Indiana Community Foundation slash Fulton County Community Foundation. We didn't uh, get a chance to get over and film your uh, session at WROI last week yeah. because of the weather, so uh, I invited Brian in and you said there's some things that were in the works yeah. even since you were talking yeah. over at WROI, so yeah. uh, just tell us a little bit about what you got yeah. going on. So we got a number of things going on. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention, we're working with a couple of organizations locally to provide a poverty simulation and bridges out of poverty workshop in April. Okay. Um, people are probably familiar with with the bridges out of poverty book. Um, kind of deals with generational poverty and and folks that um, are serving people in those situations. Um, really the goal of that workshop is to, to help organizations better serve folks. Uh -huh. So it really deals with how we communicate through different economic statuses. So a question that I ask somebody that is dealing with poverty, even though it uses the same words, may have a different meaning to somebody that's in a different economic class. And so it, it's, it's kind of interesting when we look at that, but this workshop provides a lot of information about, about the different types of classes and how to better communicate between, them, between all of them. So it's, it's a really great project. And then we're also doing a poverty simulation. So you can think about what is it like to live a month in the shoes of somebody that's dealing with poverty and actually experience that. You'll go through a simulation, you'll, you'll, have the opportunity to experience that opportunity to experience how to figure out how to feed your family or how to keep a roof over your head. Um, it's it's a very interesting experience for somebody that hasn't experienced that firsthand. So, mm -hmm. um, so those two things will be happening. The simulation will happen on April twenty sixth, mm -hmm. and then the Bridges Out of Poverty workshop will happen on April twenty seventh. Mm -hmm. um, both of those will be held at the Fulton County Historical Society north of Rochester. Um, at the museum, so um, we'll have um, some registration information starting on March 1st um, okay. to folks. Um, we are sending out information now, kind of save the date information, but if you know of somebody that you think would be interested in participating in either of those, don't hesitate to contact us at the foundation. Um, so we'll, we'll be getting those out. Um, the simulation on the 26th of April will happen from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. that afternoon. Um, and it'll be an interactive workshop. You'll go through, you'll have an opportunity to um, do your shopping, do your, take care of your monthly expenses. Mm -hmm. And hopefully ends meet when you get to the end of the month. But right. it's, it's kind of interesting when you, when you realize the time that it takes to, to the, the time that it takes for somebody in poverty to be able to obtain the things that they need. Right. Um, it's, it's a different situation. So, And then the workshop, the Bridges Out of Poverty workshop that's happening on the 27th um, will start at 8.30 a.m. that morning and run through 3.30 that afternoon. Um, there is some cost. We are asking for a $20 um, participant fee. Um, lunch will be provided on site mm -hmm. um, during the days as well. So. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at the foundation. We'd be more than happy to talk to you about that. Um, th it's These are really good simulations, really, for anybody that kind of wants to understand what's it like to deal with generational poverty. Mm -hmm. So um, we're hoping that this provides some opportunities for more conversations throughout the community and also provides some insight to organizations that are serving folks with needs. Yeah. So. And I'm sure most everybody understands what you're saying when you say generational poverty, but that's, yes. you know, it's, you're just kind of a circle. Yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not something that I'm, I'm having a financial crisis because of a short-term situation. We have a lot of folks that deal with that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but this is really more the mindset, the generational, I've grown up dealing with this, and this is what I understand. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then providing tools to kind of work out of that situation. So it's it's the generational poverty is kind of a learned experience, right? Um, from previous generations, and and so how do I 
how do I change, like you said, change that cycle mm-hmm. to be able to work out of that? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, kind of, so it, it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to break. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And, and part of what we deal with is we, we deal with, we interpret things based on our understandings. Mm-hmm. And if, if a situation is all you've ever experienced, that's the understanding you're going to have going into everything. So, yeah. so how do we, how do we help change that mindset right. and, and help folks better themselves right. as well? So I, I grew up in this situation and I'm here and I'm stuck and, and how do I get yes. out? And that's, yeah. the, that's the yeah. struggle, right? And, and how can those organizations that are serving those folks better serve the needs that they have. Right. So, so it's kind of, it's a, it's a very eye opening experience. I've been through the program a couple of times and it's, mm-hmm. I, I always get something valuable out of it. And it's, it really is about that understanding. It's like, once I understand where somebody is coming from, then mm-hmm. I can better understand how to help them. Yeah. So. Is this a, is this a program that is a bigger program that somebody has uh, it is. started. Put the together. Bridges Out of Poverty um, program is actually based off of a book. Um, Dr. Ruby Payne um, has done a lot of research in this area um, and wrote a book a number of years ago. It's been a little bit over a decade ago that she wrote the book. And so it's based off of that mm-hmm. um, program. And one of the presenters is actually going to be the co author of that book. Okay. Um, during the twenty seventh, the program on April twenty seventh. Mm-hmm. So it's it's based on a lot of research. These this is really a good opportunity for you know, a lot of social service organizations. Um, you have folks, first responders, kind of those frontline people that that may deal with this. Um, educators, um, healthcare. Those are a couple areas they actually have specialized programs. This is just the general program, but. Um, those folks that, that work with different demographics um, mm-hmm. in those areas, um, a really good opportunity. We'll be sending out invitations in the near future, but like I said, if you don't get an invitation, and this sounds like something you'd be interested in participating, it's, it's a really good opportunity to, yeah. to learn about. Um, now, if, if someone's not able to attend, is that book available and is that a good resource if they wanted to learn more about how to help it's um that book will be available um we'll have copies for the attendees but um, i'd encourage folks to to check it out um there are other workshops that happen throughout the year as well Mm -hmm. um, other opportunities and and we're planning to also offer this in the future okay Um, one question i have been asked the workshop um on the 27th and the simulation on the 26th it's not something you have to come to both. Right. Um, obviously, both will be offered. Both are valuable, but um, if somebody says, hey, I can only come to one day or the other, that's that's perfectly fine. We're mm-hmm. anticipating that being the situation. Um, and so if you can only come for one day or for both days, either either works. Okay. So don't feel like if you can't come both days, you can't participate. Right, so. right. So that's that'll be coming up on the again on April twenty sixth and twenty seventh, yeah. um, and more information will be coming out about that as well. So, okay, um, something that I kind of wanted to talk about today were some of the grant possibilities that we have at the community foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, oftentimes, the first conversation somebody comes to us with is, "Well, I I have an idea. I need some money to do this." Mm-hmm. So at the start of the year is a good time to talk about some of these grant opportunities that we have. So. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go through a, a little bit of a list of um, some of them. Um, starting off, I wanted to talk about a couple of township funds that we have. Um, so the Kiwana Union Township Endowment Fund and the Liberty Township Endowment Fund are funds that benefit projects specifically in those two townships. Mm-hmm. So you think about the Kiwana area, the Fulton area, um, those um, funds are were established, the Union Kiwana Union Township Fund was actually established in 2010 and has been making grants for a few years. Um, the Liberty Township Fund was established in um, 2018 and has been making grants. I think this will be our fourth year of grants for that. Um, but these are for projects or organizations that are serving those communities. Um, mm-hmm. We have up to $2,500 available in both of those funds. Um, so sometimes that has gone all to one organization or one project, or 
sometimes it's been split up. I think last year we split it between about four or five different organizations between okay. the two funds. So um, there is a grant application process for that, um, and we that's available on our website, nicf.org, and you can click on the Fulton County Grants page mm -hmm. um, to see that. Um, the deadline for both of those grant applications is May 2nd. Okay. So there's still some time. If you have questions about those projects, um, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, one question we get is, do I need a grant writer to do this? Mm -hmm. And we try and make it as simple as possible. Right. So I always tell people, if you can tell me about your project, if you can explain your organization, you can fill out our grant application. Mm -hmm. That being said, if you have questions, don't hesitate to give us a call. Yeah. We're more than happy to, to talk about those. So, so those are a couple that are specific for those townships. Um, another application that we actually have on our website it's not um, through the foundation but the operation roundup through Fulton County REMC um, it's a neat opportunity where um, Fulton County REMC members have the opportunity to round up mm -hmm. their monthly bill so like it and I'm a REMC member so my bill if it was fifty dollars and thirty one cents they'd round it up and add 69 cents to that and it'd be $32 and then they'd take that extra and use that to make grants each year. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's neat when you start looking at this, they, Fulton County REMC serve, services Fulton County but also some areas outside of Fulton County. Mm -hmm. So they try and make grants throughout their service area. Um, but it's neat to see how that on average $6 a year that comes out of our bill turns into grants of twenty to $25,000 right. in addition. Yep. Um, a little bit goes a long ways to, to serve. And they, they make grants in the few hundred to few thousand dollar ranges. Um, it's really neat to see things supported through schools or public service or just community projects mm -hmm. um, through this organization. So their grant application is also available on our website. Um, but those applications are returned to Fulton County REMC. Yeah. So if somebody has a question, we always direct them, direct them to REMC, and they do a great job of of supporting community needs. And like I said, you start looking at they've they've granted over four hundred fifty thousand dollars since the program started in two thousand four. So right, right. I remember when when Joe was on there before he retired. Yeah. That you guys were talking about some of the stuff that they have done. Yes. It's, it's amazing what they've done. Yeah. And, when you think about it, you're like you said, it's just a little bit yeah. on top yeah. of your bill, and yeah. it's amazing what they've been able to do yeah. with that. Those few pennies turn into a pretty significant impact in mm -hmm. our community, and really neat opportunity for for REMC members to to make an impact throughout the community in a significant way. Mm -hmm. That thirty or forty or fifty cents that comes out of my bill isn't a big deal, but when you start talking about a grant of a thousand dollars or five thousand or twenty five thousand a year. That's a pretty big number. Sure. So, yeah, um, a really neat opportunity. So, um, another one that will be coming up later in the year is the Fulton County Women's Giving Circle. Mm -hmm. um, that's a group that formed in 2010 and makes grants each year. Um, the last couple of years, we've actually done a video grant application process, mm -hmm. um, and we plan to do that again, um, and so that members can review and vote on those um, applications. Um, it's a really neat opportunity that we'll have more details as the year progresses, um, but that's usually a fall grant application timeline. So, okay. so keep that in mind again, a few hundred to a few thousand dollars on grant applications. Um, and those grants are made possible by Women's Giving Circle membership dues. Mm -hmm. um, and we've also been building an endowment fund. Um, so both of those combined have, have allowed us to make some pretty significant grants. Last year we were able to grant over $9,000 from that fund. Wow. So, um, neat. That's a that's a group that you know since its inception in 2010 has really grown. Yes, and it's it's neat to see how that continues to grow. And and in addition to the grants, they've also been building an endowment fund, which grows every year, which means that even more grants are available. Right. So that's part of the reason why they've been able to grow the amount of grants that they've been able to give out each year. So right. so really neat to see how that how that fits. If if there are women watching and say, hey. I'd, like more information about this again reach out to us and because the more members we have the more we can give away for that right so okay. um, so then a couple of our probably our more familiar grants um, we have we have what we call community support grants and impact grants 
Um, and those are come from our community funds. We've mm -hmm. talked a lot the last few years about community funds, and it's been neat to see. Of course, we've had some matching opportunities from Lilly Endowment, and thank you to Lilly Endowment for that. Mm -hmm. um, we've been able to grow that. We, Looking back over the years as we've granted, it's neat to see how we've grown from just a handful of years ago being able to give out seventy five or a hundred thousand dollars in grants to last year it was over a quarter of a million dollars mm -hmm. in grants from from community funds and so our community support grants are um, grants that um, come from those funds usually smaller grants and when I say smaller grants a few hundred to ten sometimes fifteen thousand dollar grants um, supporting community needs um, the neat thing about these grants, both the community support and impact grants, is we don't have a deadline on those. Okay. So often organizations will call us and say, when's the deadline? And we say, we don't have a deadline. When's your project? Because mm -hmm. we like to know, give, give our committee time to review. So in general, we review the applications on a quarterly basis. But occasionally there's a time where an organization may have an opportunity that comes up between those and we're able to respond to those. So mm -hmm. part of what we want to do is make it so that we can help the organizations work with their timeline versus them making them work with our timeline. Mm -hmm. So if organizations have, have projects, we always encourage them, let us know as soon as you're starting to look or consider those projects or if you have questions mm -hmm. um, and then we'll work with you on that. So, so those community support Again, those are applications that um, when you're looking at that, it's going to be talking a little bit about your organization and about your project. Um, there is a budget page. That's what we probably get the most questions on. We want, we want your organization to feel comfortable that you can complete the project mm -hmm. um, and that you have, have a concept of what the financial aspects of it are. Um, but really, we, we try and make that simple. Mm -hmm. and, and we're looking forward, we don't have it in place yet, um, but we're looking forward to having an application that you can complete entirely online. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping by the end of the year, hopefully sooner, mm -hmm. um, that that will be available. We don't have that yet, um, but just to, just to note that that's something that's coming. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of requests for that. And a lot of things, it's, it's simpler for somebody to sit down and complete something online and hit send and it's done. Right. Um, right now we do still have have the application available online, but you need to submit it to us in person. Mm -hmm. So, um, so those community support grants again um, for projects or organizations that are serving folks in Fulton County. Mm -hmm. um, we occasionally grant to organizations that may serve a wider area, but um, the significant requirement is that they're serving folks in Fulton County. Right. So. Um, so those community support grants, a great opportunity for a new project. Um, a lot of times people will say, well, has anybody ever thought about this? Mm -hmm. May have been a conversation, may not have been, but that's, that's a good opportunity. That's, that's how a lot of grants start. Yeah. Somebody has an idea and somebody says, you know what, we, we see a need. We want to be able to help with this. Right, right. So... What are, what are a couple of the uh, more memorable ones that you've done maybe over the last year or so? You know, look, looking back at last year, um, we've had, had some opportunities. Um, Habitat for Humanity is a familiar organization. They had an opportunity to, um, they were donated a lot um, in town where a home had been destroyed with fire, but they needed some, some assistance to help um, get the, the home removed and prepared for a future home. Uh -huh. um, that was an organization that, that came to us early in the year. Um, we were able to grant um, to them. Um, just some, some smaller organizations. You think about organizations like United Ministries, mm -hmm. um, a pretty critical organization. They do a food basket program yeah. each year during, during the holiday season. Um, that was one that we've been able to grant to. Um, and just, just a number of, of, really all sizes of projects um, I mean we're, those grants were a couple thousand and ten thousand mm -hmm. dollar grants um, but really organizations that are helping people um, that may find themselves in a situation that's less than ideal yeah um, and it's it's really neat to see see some of those things um, and then 
I'm going to jump ahead to impact grants. We, we start thinking about that, and those are bigger projects, also come from those community funds, but um, kind of some memorable ones that we had last year. Um, of course, the Fulton County Parks Department has been working on the Richland Restoration Park mm -hmm. north of town. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to give them a grant to help um, develop some additional things, things like a dog park that they're putting in there. Right. Um, some additional parking and, and trails that they've been building there. Right. Um, that was one that was really neat. Um, the town of Akron, if you've been through their parks, mm -hmm. um, Pike Memorial Park is just a wonderful park. Right. Um, they needed some help with um, putting in some additional trails. Uh -huh. um, one of the concerns was a safety concern because the elementary school is down the road from the community center that they have in Akron in the park. And that's one of the emergency locations in case they would have to take students from the elementary school and, and find another location. But it's also a pretty common pathway. They kind of had this unofficial path along the side of the road. So uh -huh. um, the town of Akron and, and the park department were able to get together and, and develop a new path along there, not only for students walking to and from school, but for folks using the park as well. Yeah. Um, that was a neat one. Um, the Akron Food Pantry had the opportunity to move from a downstairs location to a ground floor location and, and be more visible and better serve folks. Um, mm -hmm. Now have easier access, so right. that, that was another grant that was a pretty significant impact. And, mm -hmm. and when, I, when I talk about impact grants, that's we always like to tell people think big mm -hmm. okay this is what would get by get the project by mm -hmm. but ideal circumstances what does that look like mm -hmm. if i were to come to you and say okay i have a problem i need a solution let's think about the big picture how what's the ideal situation so those impact grants um, we really try and encourage organizations think big on this Mm -hmm. um, and and we again, there's no deadline on the the impact grant applications. Um, a little bit different process. Part of the process is um, an organization would submit a letter of intent, mm -hmm. and that's really just information about the project, um, really some basic information about the organization and a one-page summary of the project. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, we start a conversation. And, and obviously, if you're if you're doing a small project. Sometimes those can happen fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. um, bigger projects, sometimes there's more planning involved. So, um, so the process we encourage folks. The first, even though the letter of intent is the first official part of the process, don't hesitate to stop in and talk to us about your ideas. Right. Um, because that's that's really where it comes from. Somebody says, "Hey, I have an idea for this. I don't know how I can go about this, but I think it's really a need." Yeah, and your you and your office with your expertise, you know, can point them in yeah. that in that right yeah. direction and, and help them get yes. that first so, step. So it's pretty common. I mean, there, there's organizations we work with a year before they actually submit a grant application, really? just kind of getting feedback. Sometimes organizations are not sure where to go with questions or where to go with projects. Mm -hmm. um, we try and provide resources if if they have questions. Um, another thing that we see is we'll often know of other folks in the community that may be interested in, in similar projects. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's not even the financial aspect, it's connecting folks right. that have the same ideas and the same passions Yeah, and yeah. being able to make help them connect with others in the community to to reach a greater good as as a group right. rather than working on somebody. Somebody group. comes in, they have an idea, it's like, yeah. Ooh, I know this person over here that has a similar yes. idea. Let's yeah. get them together. Let's, let's connect yeah. you. And, yeah. and so that's that's a neat opportunity for mm -hmm. us as well to to create some additional collaboration. Because yeah. um, in our community, it's it's neat to see how how self sufficient of a mindset we have, mm -hmm. um, and that leads to a lot of great things that we have in our community. You think about over the years some of the new organizations that have been formed just because people said hey i'm seeing a need i want to be able to support this mm -hmm. and that's where it's where those ideas have come from so those those impact grants we encourage people think big mm -hmm. think about okay i could get by with this but the ideal situation looks like this mm -hmm. come to us with that what does that ideal situation look like yeah we may not be able to fund it or we may collaborate with others to fund it but 
we want people to have that vision of what it can become mm -hmm. down the road. So, yeah. so really neat opportunity. And so, so again, no, no deadline on those applications. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we always encourage folks start thinking about that process now. Talk to us if you have questions. We're more than happy to try and connect you with resources, whether it be financial from a foundation or information. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's part of what we try and do because we're we're trying to help good people do good things with grant dollars. Right. So. And I'm sure you have a lot of connections outside of your resources that you know that you can point people to that yeah, can and help we, them. We as try well. and we try if we know of other resources available, try and connect folks with with those resources as well because right. it takes. It takes more than just money to be able to do projects. It takes people. It takes collaboration. It takes mm -hmm. takes working together as a, as a community, and that's um, that's our ultimate goal is to be able to to do all of the above. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Well, it's it's kind of like you know your your title, you know the community foundation. You're yeah. kind of you could put that backwards, right? The foundation of the community. Yeah, we we try and try and help provide that financial aspect so that it makes makes good things possible, mm -hmm. and we do that. I mean, we've been we mentioned donors. None of what we do would be possible without donors supporting right. this, and and a large part of that has been um, the success of our matching campaigns through Lilly Endowment to help grow from, say, if we had seventy thousand dollars to grant out this year versus. A quarter of a million dollars. Mm -hmm. You think last year we were able to give give um, two grants that were over thirty thousand yeah. um, dollars. That's that's been made possible because of donors. Yeah. So, and that's the same when you say Lily Endowment. That's the same fund that basically gives a student at each in each county a, a free. It's it's a little bit different. A little different. Um, okay. So so the the monies that's a, that's a good question. The monies that. Um, we're talking about for community funds, Lilly Endowment has offered matching campaigns. Uh -huh. um, and so we've been able to match those goals. And so Lilly has provided those funds. We have those funds here. Um, the scholarship is a little bit different in that um, Lilly Endowment actually provides those dollars, but they lean on local community foundations to be involved in the selection and recommendation process. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a little bit different in that those dollars come directly from Lilly Endowment. Mm -hmm. um, and we're very appreciative. It's, that's been a great thing for our community. Sure. Um, they gave out the first scholarships in, in 1998 and have continued to do that program and made made it possible for many students to, to obtain an education that they wouldn't have been able to afford elsewise. But I mean, it's in that case, it's a collaboration with Lilly Endowment to help help um, find students in the community and then support them through that process. I, I think even even this last year, you had two. There was a student from Rochester and a student from Valley, right? That that got the because she, they lived in Kosciuszko County. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. they, so they actually ended up being two. Yes. Kind two, of two Fulton way. County schools will right. claim. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. So that's a. That's a great opportunity, and and with each, with each scholarship, it's it's county of residence in that case. Mm -hmm. um, so there is that opportunity to be able to um, distribute that, and and it's it's neat to see how um, we've had students recently from each of the each of our county schools um, mm -hmm. be able to receive that scholarship. Yeah, so yeah. really neat. It is a great program. I had uh, some good friends of mine from Royal Center. Their son won it a couple years ago for Cass yes. County, and. You know, it's just amazing, you know, because yeah. you all that pressure that you have for paying for yes. education yeah. is, is gone, yeah. and you can yeah. just go and focus on yeah. and what I, you need and to. And I think that kind of goes along with the idea of dream big. Mm -hmm. Well, if if finances were not a not a concern, yeah, what could I achieve? Right, and that's an oper That's a perfect example of that opportunity. So, right, yeah. So really great. So. Anything else you want to discuss you know, here? I think that's those are a couple of the big things. We're always working on some new things, so we'll have have new information um, coming up. We'll we'll probably be talking at some point in the near future about some of the, these community support grants and impact grants that are made in twenty twenty two. We're looking mm -hmm. forward to those ideas that come to us. Yeah. Um, already had to have had a couple organizations approach us and working on some concepts. So I'm looking forward to that, but. Um, if folks 
folks want to find, we talked about the grant applications. Um, they can find that on our website, nicf.org, mm -hmm. um, and we have a Fulton County Grants page, and mm -hmm. there'll be information about all these, the, the community support impact, the Kiwana Union Township, Liberty Township. Um, grant applications are all available there. Yeah. Um, if folks have questions or they look at the form and they don't understand it, um, or a lot of times, like I said, the budget is one thing that folks will have questions about. Don't hesitate to reach out to us because we're we're here to help you do good things. Yeah. So, and your office is open, right? So the public can come open, in yep, now. Yep. And, and our office is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4:30. Mm -hmm. um, if folks have have questions or concerns or those times don't work for them, don't hesitate to reach out because we we'll always try and try and make accommodations. But our office is open, 227 East 9th Street here mm -hmm. in Rochester. Um, you can give us a call, 574-224-3223. Um, um, like I've mentioned, website nicf.org. Mm -hmm. Or um, we also have information available on Facebook, um, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. We try and keep, keep that information as accessible as possible. And... Um, but as always, don't hesitate to reach out if somebody has an idea. Yeah. Well, Brian, thanks for coming in. A lot of great information there, as always. And we can kind of use this as a, a, a mid-month primer as there we'll be go. back at WROI here before too long yeah. and have the uh, Community Foundation Report coming up again from there. So a lot of good things coming up in the uh, near horizon for yeah. the Community Foundation and for the community. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Thanks for uh, stopping by. Thanks for we'll uh, see you here next month at the uh, regular scheduled time at WRI. Will do. All right. Thank you.